How's it going, Sat? Good. Uh, first drive last week, I think it was a tempo. It was kind of those first couple of plays, but then at least I didn't see you guys really going back to it. Is that by design, or is that tempo just maybe a, a tease, something that you guys know that you can do when you need to? We wanted to get back to it, but I think just the inc- inconsistent play that we had, like we never could get into a drive to utilize it. Uh, you know, it felt so good on that first drive because we got first downs and was rolling, was able to use tempo, and I think our guys played better that way. Uh, so we, we've got to start executing and extending drives so we can continue to use it to our advantage. Um, Arkansas might be without one or both of its starting safety Saturday, which we still don't know. How does that factor into a game plan, or how, or how much do you just still focus on what you're doing, even if the other team might kind of be at a big disadvantage at one certain spot? Uh, I mean, you're very cognizant and aware of, of you know their, their injury situation and how that might change them. Uh, but, you know, right now we're just really, like you said, focusing on ourselves and trying to fix some issues. Seth, so you mentioned fixing some issues. What are some things that you and, and the rest of this offensive staff are kind of harping on as you get into Arkansas week? Uh, well, not attitude. Our attitude has been unbelievable. Our practice has been really good this week. Uh, just, I mean, I'm sure, like the elephant in the room, like, we have to run the football. We have to be able to block people. We have to be able to block movement. We have to be able to, you know, function in space. And it's not just the offensive line. It's, you know, all I've heard about is the offensive line, which had its own struggles. But, I mean, we got our butts kicked on the perimeter. And we knew that Georgia State was going to do a bunch of different stuff and moving around and made it, you know, just the reason that they got Tennessee a couple years ago and the reason they played Auburn well. So we knew we were going to have to get the ball on the perimeter. And we just we got whipped on the perimeter. So that's, that's a huge emphasis for us. Uh, we went a couple, you know, live periods on the perimeter this this week just to prepare us and and sharpen us up and and get us to where we need to go. Looking back at Spencer's performance, what do you think? How do you think he did? And were there any areas he needs to improve on going into this week? Uh, I thought I think he played well. I mean, it was an emotional it was an emotional sideline. I mean, those those lights, the music, the atmosphere. I mean, it felt like a like a Super Bowl out there. It was amazing. I think he calmed down. I mean, he got that first completion. Uh, you know, I told him as me and him both midway through the second quarter probably started pressing a little bit, like you know, kind of like well, th- we thought this was going to be flowing a little bit more, uh, and it wasn't. And I think we both pressed, and I think that uh, you know he did some good things. Obviously, you know, had a couple throws there that he'd like to have back, uh, but you know, he he he's great. He's you know he came back this week and had probably his best practice today. Said you mentioned the perimeter blocking and guys are working on it. When you have a struggle running between the tackles, blocking so you can throw a deep pass downfield and you've got a bunch of seniors, how easy is that to correct when you've got these guys that have been playing one way and now it's like it's still not good enough? Uh, it's, I mean, it, uh, that's a great question. Um, you just have to keep working at it. And, I mean, they can, you know, our offensive line can block and they can protect. Uh, you know, it's sometimes they get beat, and sometimes it, it's their fault. Sometimes it's not their fault. So, you know, we're just going to keep working, keep plugging away. I'm not down on them in any by any stretch. I mean, I knew that Georgia State, like we're going to play bigger, you know, faster, more athletic guys in the SEC. So I understand that, but that's a very talented defense who's got a lot of people that played a lot of football, and they're just they move around and made it got on edges. We were on edges all night, so I think we'll be okay. We're just you know our guys just keep working and grinding. Sad, obviously, we saw Spencer sort of the ability to extend plays a little bit. I mean, is that something you can build into the offense a little bit midseason or I guess, you know, one weekend? But, like, is that something you can build in, maybe some more rollouts, some things to get him moving, uh, get the pocket moving a little bit, that kind of thing? Uh, I think so. I mean, the superpower he has is a lot like those. Again, I hate referencing Oklahoma, but, uh, I mean, those guys, Baker to Jalen to Kyler, I mean, all of them, that's how they played. I mean, you know, they it's not really uh, mayhem scramble. It's just – he understands time and space and very casually knows how to move out of the pocket, never really out of control. So I think that's uh, something that you can use to your advantage uh, offensively, especially when you're trying to, you know, move the pocket and protect the passer. So I think, you know, that'll grow within our offense, but it's really just, you know, him kind of, it's his game. I was calling him Fran Tarkenton and he had no idea who the hell Fran Tarkenton was. So we had to look it up on YouTube. And following up on that, Marcus, I mean, obviously he can scramble and you want to exploit that, but are you comfortable as a play caller knowing how much he means to keep kind of putting him out there in, quote, you know, harm's way? Uh, yeah, as long as he's smart. I mean, when he's out there, he can at least he can control the narrative, you know, most of the time. So he knows when he needs to get down, when he needs to give up on a play. Uh, you know, 
he's got a very good understanding of just spatial awareness of how, you know, maybe not to take that big hit. He can kind of position himself. So, you know, knock on wood, I mean, he's got to do everything he can for us to, you know, move the ball and be successful as a, as a team. So he's willing to do that. Seth, you mentioned you and, and Spencer both kind of pressing a little bit after that first quarter. How do you kind of shy away from doing that? Is it easier said than done to try to not press when the offense might not be moving? It, it's it's a it's a it's a terrible feeling because you feel you feel it like I mean the the guys have great like last year I don't know I, I think we would have had some you know pointing fingers and complaining you know at certain times this year our guys just came on the sideline they were frustrated almost to the point not. You know, they were just kind of like, all right, next one. They, like, they were relaxed. They knew that eventually something was going to happen. I think me as a play caller, like, I just started trying to, like, what can we do to get, you know, five yards here to get us started on this drive? And sometimes you try to be a little bit too perfect out there. And I think it fi kind of feel, makes you feel claustrophobic. So, you know, we got to just let it go and just run our plays and, and try to, like you said, utilize a little tempo and get our guys relaxed. I think we'll be all right. Hey, Coach. Um, those two interceptions that Spencer had, you know, how much of that do you put on just bad decision making on his part, and how much of that was sort of the the factor of other things, the receivers, the O line, and all that? Uh, had zero to do with the O line, and uh, you know, had everything to do with just you know, there was the one could have been you know, it was a little high, could have been caught. So I mean, that's kind of a fifty fifty thing that happens. And then I think he'll tell you the other one, like he's out moving around the pocket. I think that you know he could have ran the ball right there, could have checked it down, but he can't force the ball into coverage like that. And I think, you know, he's he owned that one. And uh, he's, he's again, today he did a couple things today out on the practice field that was awesome and remedying some of the situations and he would do it and just start yelling at me and laughing and high-fiving and stuff. So uh, he's phenomenal. After that second interception um, that he threw, how do you think the energy on the field kind of changed and shifted and how did you guys, like, how were y'all able to come back around by the end of the game? Uh, I think at that point it was kind of like, well, kind of like, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that happened. And uh, we just we we regrouped on the sideline. We kind of just yelled at each other and in a playful way. And the game, thank God, Pistol Pete had those kicks of those punts blocking. And uh, you know, we we were comfortably ahead, so we could you know just kind of chalk that up for let's learn from it, let's move on, let's get Luke out there for one drive there at the end, and let's go to work. And that's what we've done. Yeah, Coach, uh, going back to the running game for just a second, uh, Jaheim Bell actually ended up leading the team in yards uh, in that first game. And then, of course, uh, Marshawn Lloyd kind of coming back. He had his share of carries, too. Um, how much of that, I guess, was a degree of, like, you know, it's the first game kind of experimenting with what works and, you know, seeing, I guess, who gets the most or who gets certain carries in certain situations? Like, uh, kind of like what was the strategy with that uh, opening up with uh, Bell getting the carries that he did? Uh, Bell's going to touch the ball a lot every game. And, uh, you know, at least when you hand him the ball, he doesn't have to, you know, we don't have to rely on a matchup and a route and a ball going from the quarterback to him in the air. Like, there's a lot of variables that are taken out of the equation. So when you hand him the ball, at least you know he's touching it and he needs to have a bunch of touches. So his role will continue to grow, carrying the football and running routes and doing anything that we possibly can to get the ball in his hands. And obviously, if you can get the ball in his hands in space, it's even better on the perimeter. How did uh, uh, coming out of the press box and going down onto the sideline come about? And what do you like being? What do you like about being down there versus up high? Uh, just the communication. I mean, I've been I've called it on the field probably more than I have in the box. And just to be down there with the guys, be down there with Spencer, be able to feel the sideline. I felt like that uh, I wanted to be down there and be a presence on the sideline if things did go wrong, like they were, you know, not everything was smooth the other night. Just to be down there to be with the old line, to be with the tight ends, and uh, I loved it. I mean. Got great, great coaches, great communication, the sideline, the communication from the, you know, Coach Atkins is a savant up there. He's able to see a lot of things and he's able to relay the information to me. So I think it's going to be a strength for us uh, moving forward. We saw you go fullback a couple times, especially early in the game on that first drive. Is that something you're comfortable with kind of going tighter or is it still more of a work in progress? Uh, I mean, that was Jaheim. I mean, I was just finding a way to get Jaheim. We were just, I was watching, uh, I think it was, I can't remember what year it was, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Uh, this summer on like the classic replays in the wishbone and I wrote myself a reminder line up in the wishbone and so uh, we lined up in the wishbone and ran a little belly there on short yardage and uh, see if that you know hopefully that the wishbone kind of grows like you start like we talked about telling a story like with the plays like it starts with that and then how how does that expand you know moving forward.
I was going to say, by the end of the season, are we going to see like an Emery Ballard offense out there with the wishbound or something like <laughs> no, that? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I guess just on Arkansas, their defensive line, I guess w- what kind of matchup problems do they kind of present? I guess what have you seen, kind of seen from them on film at least so far? Uh, they're uh, much larger than Georgia State length. I mean, 6'4", 6'5", 300-pound guys. Uh, you know, their strength is going to be their length, uh, up. For, you know, their girth up front, not as much of the you know moving and stemming and angling and doing all the stuff that we faced last week. So... Uh, just to be able to move the line of scrimmage, uh, make sure that we're getting on proper angles, staying on those angles. And I think, you know, just they're, they they play four down and they play three down. And, you know, they may play a whole game of four down and then the next two games be all three down and then the next game be four down. So uh, we've had to pull back a lot, which is probably good, uh, you know, in the run game just because we can't rep it all versus all the different looks. So, you know, we've got a nice, simple attack and attack these guys and hopefully our line, you know, improves. That you mentioned the run game, you're potentially getting Christian back this week to go out there. If he does ultimately play, how much can that help the run game? Just bringing a guy in who's played a lot of ball. A lot. I mean, he's you know he's that kind of that consistent, um, low to the ground, like just a, a stump basically. You know, you give him the ball, he's going to move that thing forward two or three yards at worst. So, just to have again his maturity, and uh, you know he's had a lot of experience playing. Uh, Wake, you know, just to get him back on the field will help us tremendously, especially at that position. Awesome. Thank you, guys.